to True Crime Nightmare, a podcast that covers solved and unsolved murder cases from the UK and from around the world. This is episode 46. This is the solved case of Colin Norris, who is a serial killer from Scotland. Colin Norris was a nurse who uh, abused his position in the most horrible way. He murdered some of his patients. Colin Norris was found guilty in relation to the deaths of four elderly patients as well as the attempted murder of another patient. His crimes occurred in two separate hospitals, both of them in Leeds, which is a town in northern England. His murderous activity occurred over a very short period of time, believed to have been between May 2002 November of 2002. He was arrested shortly afterwards so it is obviously likely that he would have in all probability carried on with his evil actions if not caught. He used insulin to kill his victims. He would intentionally overdose the poor victims with insulin over the under the guise of helping and nursing them. They would obviously have had trust in him and would not have known that anything was wrong in all probability until it was too late. Fortunately, at least one victim managed to live despite his evil intentions to kill her. Colin Norris was born on the 12th of February of 1976 and he was in his 30s at the time of his arrest. He was born in a place called Milton. Milton is a district in the Scottish city of Glasgow. It is situated just north of the River Clyde. His crimes took place in England and he is now locked away in prison in England for at least 30 years, but hopefully for the rest of his life. The two hospitals where the attacks took place were Leeds General Infirmary and St James's University Hospital, which was also in the city of Leeds, England. Colin Norris had previously worked as a travel agent um, straight from leaving school. He carried out this job until a few years later when he decided that he would like to train to work as a nurse. He qualified as a nurse in June of 2001. His first job as a fully qualified nurse was at Leeds General Infirmary in Leeds. Colin Norris unbelievably got away with stealing medication from a hospital Early on in his career, he was caught, but astonishingly, he did not lose his job at the hospital or face any other serious consequences in relation to the stealing of the drugs. It would only take one year after he had qualified and started work as a nurse for Colin to start his murderous activity against elderly patients. I find it amazing that after studying for four years and the work placements that he had to go on to be able to qualify as a nurse, uh, that he immediately, it seems, practically started to try and bump off some of his patients. Colin Norris would be convicted of the murders of Doris Ludlam, who had been 80 years old at the time, Bridget Burke, who had been 88 years old, Irene Crooks, who had been 79, and Ethel Hall who had been 86 years old at the time of her death. He was convicted of all four murders and one attempted murder in March of 2008. He is thought to have killed his victims by using insulin and bringing on their deaths without any thought to what he was doing and that it was the actions of a deviant. It has been suggested that for some reason Colin Norris found elderly people disgusting He had not wanted to look after them, but was given the job of primarily looking after elderly patients, it would seem. He is currently serving his sentence at Durham Prison in England. His mother regularly visits her son whenever possible. She has been interviewed over the years and is steadfast in her ongoing full support of Colin. Amazingly, in my opinion, the police officer who led the case in regards to Colin Norris had just completed a report on Harold Shipman, the GP who had killed many of his patients, quite possibly over 200, although he was actually convicted of killing 15. His victims were also elderly and vulnerable in most cases. Chief Superintendent Chris Gregg was the man for the job, it would seem, in relation to the Colin Norris case as well. How the case came to the police's attention was because of suspicions over the death of Ethel Hall. 
On the 11th of November in 2002, Ethel Hall, who at the time was 86 years old, was admitted to an orthopaedic ward at the Leeds General Infirmary Hospital. She had a broken hip, which had resulted due to her falling over. Ethel Hall had an operation on the 14th of November 2002. She had come out of the operation okay and was on her way to recovery. But on the 20th of November 2002, she was observed by staff who saw her in some distress. She was making choking noises. It was night time and the night team allocated to the ward attended Ethel Hall. The team consisted of staff nurse Colin Norris as well as other team members who were on duty at the time. The nursing team called for the doctor on duty but unfortunately Ethel slipped into a coma. She died on the 11th of December 2002. When the nurses had first assisted Ethel on the 20th of November, it was noted that her blood glucose level was measured. She was deemed to be experiencing hypoglycemia, which is dangerously low blood glucose. Hypoglycemia can sometimes result in irreversible coma and at times death. This condition is mainly found in insulin dependent diabetic people. Ethel Hall was not diabetic. Because a doctor involved in Ethel Hall's care had reservations with her readings, he spoke to his superior at the hospital, a consultant, who went on to order a sample of Ethel's bloods to be tested by a specialist. On the 29th of November of 2002, the hospital was told that the blood results had indicated that there had been a high concentrated dose of insulin in Ethel Hall's blood sample. This was all that was needed to confirm that there did appear to be some suspicions around her untimely death. The police were notified. It was up to the West Yorkshire Police Force to investigate further, which began on the 6th of December 2002. The police had to interview all of the staff that had been involved in Ethel Hall's care, which included Colin Norris. He was interviewed on the 9th of December. He would be arrested on the 11th of December. He would be held for just under 30 hours initially. He was questioned about Ethel Hall's death. He denied having anything to do with her death and he was eventually released. The police would speak to 16 people in total who had been in the area where Ethel had seemingly been administered insulin that she had not needed and that, as it would later turn out, was a fatal dose against her. Seemingly, the hospital staff were all interviewed because they had been working on Ethel's ward or were working close by within the hospital setting on the night that the incident took place. The incident that would later be identified as a murder against a vulnerable frail patient who had been recovering from an operation. At the time, people were unsure as to just why the police had identified Colin Norris as a potential suspect in Ethel Hall's suspicious death. Over the next few years Colin was re-arrested and interviewed by the West Yorkshire Police on another five occasions. Although no change charges were made at this time, ongoing work was underway in relation to not only Ethel Hall's death but in relation to other patients who had died in very similar circumstances as Ethel Hall. Because the police were convinced that foul play had ended up with a patient dying unexpectedly, they wanted to look into any other people who had suffered from similar hypoglycemic episodes, especially in regards to patients who were not known to be diabetic. The police investigation would cover two wards that Colin Norris had worked on. He'd only been a qualified nurse for about a year, so fortunately it would be a lot easier to go through records covering a relatively short period of time. The two hospitals were the Leeds General Infirmary and also St James's Hospital, also in Leeds. The time period was 2001 until 2002. A lot of interest was apparently given to any possible cases that involved staff nurse Colin Norris being present at the time of death. After looking at hundreds of cases, the police narrowed the murders and attempted murder cases down considerably.
On the 12th of October 2005, Colin Norris was charged in relation to the murders of Ethel Hall, 86, Bridget Bork, 89, Doris Ludlam, 80 and Irene Crooks, 78. All four victims had suffered hypoglycemic episodes just before they sadly died. As well as the murders, he was also charged with the attempted murder of Vera Wilby, who was 90. Vera Wilby did actually die, but many months after experiencing the hypoglycemic episode, sadly. So he was actually just charged with attempted murder in her case. Colin Norris stood trial on the 16th of October of 2007. The trial lasted 19 weeks in total and came five years after the murders. Experts would go on to testify against Colin Norris in stating that hypoglycemia in non-diabetic people was incredibly rare. It was said that to find five such cases in just two hospitals was unheard of in reality, in any normal circumstances anyway. The only explanation that the experts could come up with was that all of the victims had been unlawfully injected with insulin. The prosecution stated that the common denominator was staff nurse Colin Norris. He had been the staff nurse principally entrusted with the care of all of the victims. Colin's defence could not really come up with a very convincing theory as to what had actually happened, although they did suggest that a mystery intruder may have gained access to the patients and for some reason had injected them with insulin before disappearing and without anyone seeing them at all. It was also stated that vials of insulin was uncounted for on the ward that Ethel Hall had been admitted to prior to her death. The prosecution also alleged that Colin Norris had displayed animosity at times in regards to elderly patients. In one of his earlier police interviews, he had said that he found bathing elderly patients difficult whilst he had been on his placements before qualification, but he then told the police that he had quote, soon got over it, unquote. The judge in this case was Mr Justice Griffiths Williams. The jury retired on the 27th of February of 2008. They were advised that they could deliver a majority verdict. On the 5th of March 2008, the jury returned a 11 to 1 majority verdict. They found Colin Norris guilty on all charges. He was sentenced by the judge the next day. His sentence handed down was a life sentence with a recommendation that he serves a minimum of 30 years in prison. The first appeal that the defence put in was on the 9th of December 2009. No progress was made with the appeal at all and the Court of Appeal upheld the conviction. As in a lot of cases, people came forward and added their bit to cases and it was no different in this case either. Some people who had known Colin prior to him being put away, told how he had apparently disliked elderly people and had confided that he hated looking after them. Colin Norris, it has been said, had many disagreements over the years with other colleagues and authority figures. He would try and get out of working with elderly patients, which had stood out because, as a nurse, this would appear unusual especially to make your feelings known. Regardless of how you feel about certain patients, you are expected to care for them the same way and with the same compassion as any other patient. It has also been said that he objected to assisting patients with their personal care, such as using the toilet, yet also objected at times to changing beds as well. After his conviction and after he had been sentenced, you would believe that the case was closed. But there could well be a different outcome in this case because new scientific evidence is now available in regards to hypoglycemia and doubts have been expressed by some very knowledgeable people in relation to how the patients actually died. There is now apparently every chance that they could have died from natural causes. Over the years, more funding has been available in research and Colin Norris has 
a fairly reasonable chance, in some people's opinions, of um, actually being exonerated. Lots more research has been completed into diabetes and hypoglycemia, and it has been discovered that in some cases, spontaneous hypoglycemia can, in certain cases, occur in non-diabetic elderly people or people with other major um, health complications. A leading expert in this particular field, a Professor Vincent Marks, who is widely considered the world's leading expert on insulin and hypoglycemia, took up the case in regards to Colin Norris's conviction. He prepared a report for Colin's case in, and in the report, Professor Marks concluded that spontaneous hypoglycemia affects 5% to 10% of non-diabetic elderly patients who have risk factors such as other serious conditions. It was also determined that all of the women affected in this case had other risk factors. He summarised his findings in October of 2011 and he submitted them to the Criminal Cases Review Commission. The Criminal Cases Review Commission, or the CCRC, is the statutory body responsible for investigating alleged miscarriages of justice in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. It was established by Section 8 of the Criminal Appeals Act in, of 1995, and most cases will go there if there's any doubts. The CCRC is the only body in its area of jurisdiction with the authority and power to send a case back to an appeals court and it only does this if it concludes that there is a real possibility that the court will overturn a conviction or reduce a prison sentence. In 2011, the CCRC published a report which would acknowledge problems with some expert witness evidence, not necessarily in this case, but in cases that go before any court in general. The report concluded that pre-trial hearings should take place where expert testimony could be probed before going before a jury. Had the proposed system been in place before Collins' trial, then the absence of any complete research to support the alleged rarity of non-diabetic hypoglycemia would have become apparent with, with that being looked into. There is a possibility that the expert's testimony would have been ruled inadmissible by the judge. However, at the time of these recommendations, the Justice Minister, Christopher Grayling, who was an MP, rejected the report and he stated the reason as being that pre-trial hearings in regards to this sort of case would cost too much money to implement. Because many concerns have been raised in connection with Colin Norris's conviction, the CCRC have referred the case to the Court of Appeal as of February of 2021. Once a decision is made on this case and whether the conviction is still deemed to be safe or if there are some concerns, especially with advancements in scientific evidence, hopefully a decision will be made either way. The families of the victims need to know that the correct verdict was made in relation to the deaths of their loved ones. Also, if there are indeed still doubts about his conviction, Colin Norris deserves the right to have the evidence looked at again. He is currently serving a sentence of at least 30 years in prison. The uncertainty for all involved in this case is obviously very painful. It was thought that staff nurse Colin Norris had given five elderly patients insulin that they had not needed and that this had led to the deaths of four straight away and another one afterwards. Some people, including colleagues, had told the police that, that investigated the suspicious deaths that Colin had showed a dislike in regards to elderly people and Colin himself had admitted that he had struggled at first but that he had got used to it in the end. Some people do struggle at times with some aspects of their jobs, but most people realise that they will have to either learn to cope or find another job. There does seem to be enough doubt about the conviction that it should be re-looked at, 
but that could still mean that Colin Norris is still guilty, but at least the evidence would have been relooked at and hopefully any doubts can be investigated further. No one wants to see an innocent person locked up if he really is innocent, but likewise, no one really wants a guilty person getting away with multiple murders either. There is there is no timeline for when a decision will be made, but these cases often take a long time to be reviewed and the pandemic will probably have created even more of a backlog, as in most things. The case was referred to the Court of Appeal in February 2021 and Colin Norris is still locked up and presumed guilty. This is a very sad case. Either way, hopefully justice will win and the right outcome will be made, even if it is exactly the outcome that is in place now. But at least because of advancements in scientific evidence, at least um, it will hopefully be looked at properly and then it could be put to bed at long last. usual thank you very much for listening to this solved but potentially unsolved case colin norris was dubbed quote angel of death unquote when convicted but only time will tell if that really was the case or whether he's actually an innocent man Credits for this episode go to theguardian.com, the justicegap.com website, which was really useful, bbc.co.uk, and a good documentary, although slightly out of date now, but it's um, a panorama documentary made by the BBC. Thank you again for listening. Bye. Bye.